Hey, it's Joe from JoeCalantonio.com and TestTalks.com. In this video, I want to show you how easy it is to get started using Apply Tools doing visual validation testing. Check it out. So I recently interviewed Adam from Apply Tools on my Test Talks podcast, and I also created a blog post about visual validation. So I thought since we're talking about something that's so visual, that would only make sense to make a video for it. So in this video, I will show you how easy it is to get started using Apply Tools and to add some visual verification points to your test scripts. Now, just so you know, I've never used Apply Tools before. So this is the first day I've ever used it. So this should give you an idea about how easy it is to get started using it. So first, you want to head on over to applytools.com. And if you don't already have an account, you can sign in and get one for free. So once you have your free account set up and you log in, You'll have an option to either choose automated visual test or codeless browser test. For this example, I'm going to use the automated visual test. So the first step is you just need to select what automation environment you're using. Apply Tools runs against Selenium, Appium, UFT QTP, Coded UI, and other automation frameworks. So today I'm just going to use Selenium, so I'm going to select Selenium. And then next you need to select what language you're using pretty much supports all the Selenium language bindings. I'm using Java, so I'm going to select Java. So depending on what language you selected, this option will be different. Because I chose Java, I have two options. I can either use Maven, or I can download the Java file directly and add it to my project. Because I'm using Maven, I'm actually going to use the Maven option. So I'm just going to copy and paste this into my Maven POM file for my Selenium project. So in my project, I'm just going to head on over to my POM file. And in my POM file, I'm just going to add that dependency to Apply Tools. Cool. So now I have my dependency information already set up. And the fourth step is when you log into Apply Tools, you're assigned a user specific API key. And this API key is different for everybody. So mine will be different from yours. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy my API key and I'm going to go into my existing Selenium script and start adding all the code I need to use for get Apply Tools up and running. So first, I need to import the two Apply Tools libraries that I'm going to be using in the script. The first one is the eyes and the second one is, is the rectangle size. So next, you want to create an instance of the Apply Tools eyes object. So I'm going to add the next line, eyes eyes equals new eyes. Then you want to set your API key. So I'm going to do eyes dot set API key and I'm going to pass it my API key. Yours is going to be different. So once you have that set up, you want to then go in and create an eyes dot open to initialize your web driver. And I'm just passing it the name of my application and the name of my test. Then I'm just going to navigate to my web page. And once I get on the web page, I just want to grab that window. So I'm going to do an eyes.check window. So I'm just going to have one check in my test, and then I'm going to do an eyes.close. So let's run this test and see what happens. So the first time you run the test with Apply Tools, it's going to create a baseline image and store that image on their cloud. And if you run the test again, another image will be captured and then compared to your baseline image. And so any differences that are found they'll be highlighted as conflicts. Ran my test once, and I just went into the Apply Tools I logged in, and now I'm just looking at my baseline image, and it just shows me what was captured for the baseline. So next, I'm just gonna run the test again, and then once I run the test again, I'll have another image to compare against my baseline to see if Apply Tools found any differences. So let's run the test again. So after running the test a second time, notice that it did find differences, so the test failed. If you click on either of the assertions and look at the assertion error message, you'll see a link to find out how to look at the image that was captured to compare the differences. So I'm just going to go to this URL that's in my assertion error message. So when you go to Apply Tools, it has a running log of all the results from each of your checks. So I'm just going to navigate to the check that failed. So because I ran the test again, it compared this result to the previous baseline. And if there are any differences, it's going to be highlighted as a conflict. So this is cool because all we needed to do was add this one check window 
method. And that one validation is able to validate all the content, data, layout, and appearance of all the UI elements on our web, web page. So rather than doing a bunch of assertions to check every single element, all we needed to do was just pass it this one check windows method, and it took care of all those checks for us automatically. So this is a big time saver. So if we look at the difference here, it highlights it in pink. And if you click on this view option, you can show side by side the current run to the baseline run, and it will show you the differences between the two. So now there are three things you can do. You can either accept the change and say, yes, I know my application changed. So in this sprint, they added a new feature, should be the baseline going forward. So you could just accept the changes as correct, not, not an issue. Or you can click on reject. And by selecting reject, it basically keeps your previous baseline. Or you can mock this as a bug. But really what we wanna do is, because this is dynamic data and it's always gonna be changing, we want to ignore this in all our future test runs. So in order to do that, you have an option under regions called add region. And this basically, you can highlight a region and tell Apply tools to ignore anything in that region. So anytime you run again, it's going to ignore that and focus on all the other elements that don't have this ignore region. So right now I know that this time element, I know the first part is always going to change. It should always have this minute and the seconds the actual seconds are gonna change, but the text will stay the same. So we're just going to ignore the numbers. Also, I know that this time will always change. So I'm just gonna highlight this. And even though the image didn't change in the second test run, I know this will change in future test runs. I'm gonna highlight this image. This is a Google AdSense image. So this is dynamically generated. And since it's not really part of my application, I don't care about it. I'm just gonna highlight it. So going forward, if that change, that ad changes, it will ignore that ad. Cool, so now I'm just gonna accept, make this my new baseline, and I'm gonna run the test again. Okay, so I reran my test and my test passed. So I'm just gonna go into Apply Tools again and look at that latest test run. So notice it says pass, I'm gonna click on passed. It'll show me what the current image looked like. And notice it did ignore the highlighted images. If I click on the compare to baseline, notice that the data within the highlighted ignore area has changed, but it ignored it because I told it that that's, it's not important to just ignore it in all the test runs. So it's able to rerun and compare the image and just ignore anything that I had highlighted as ignore. Cool, so that's all you need to do to get started using Apply Tools. There's a lot more advanced options and a lot more things you can do with Apply Tools, but this should be enough to get you on your way. And like I said, I've never used Apply Tools until today, so I was able to get up and running fairly quickly, and that's it. So I'm Joe, and my goal is to help you succeed with test automation awesomeness. Hope it helped. Cheers.